Left hand one is basically one of your befores, you would say. Right hand one is a good practice swing, I mean really good, and a good swing. Not perfect yet, but you know me, I'm always a task master, okay? You I, want, I want to challenge everybody saying, that's, why I'm, oh, still, that's why I'm still here. And that's why I was definitely, oh, it's all right, deal with that. I want you to just get better. For me, it's always, improvement never fails, never stops, okay? Yeah. Always want to get better and better and better, okay? This was your swing on the left hand side. I think hand positions sometimes go a bit far forward, so back swing now looking great. As you come into that golf ball, Left hand sucks into your left pocket across the golf ball. This one you just thinned it, as you can see, because it wasn't a very high flight. And a very sort of stuck position there with your hands all very close into the body. Not much, much extension or reach with the golf ball. Arms, obviously, if that club's very heavy, sort of going, come on, doing that. And that a lot of times comes when we're gripping it very tight. Yeah. If you look at this right hand swing now, okay, it looks as though the club is just looser and lighter because your arms can do that. that that's perfect. Okay, if we, can, if we can get, if that could be your swing, by a said date, which could be any point, that to me would probably say, okay, we're kind of there now. We're just working on some sort of short game course management or something. But that, that would be kind of your ultimate perfect swing, which you can physically do because you, you're doing it there. What we've got to work on now is more whether or not inside there can do that down there. Okay? Yeah. When there's nothing there, it's a piece of piss. Yeah. <laughs> when he gets there and there's out of bounds on the right-hand side or there is, I don't know, a pond down there or a bunker down there or whatever it may be you'll just try and do this swing it pin it left please go left okay but if you notice when you swing the club in this fashion like so your arms just fold over look at your right arm now that's not folding and rolling your arms you're just releasing the club better so you finish the swing nice and high hands in a good position rather than around there too far around by your head okay so when the ball gets there i'll go back and show you what you were so you can sort of get a comparison okay so that's kind of where you were there, sort of sucked in yeah. to your body, just ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so same good backswing. There you go. Now, as we swing through, that's better, isn't it? Better. It's still not, as we said, perfect, but certainly for me, there's at least daylight yeah, there. As you zoom in, you'll see. Look. I mean, yeah. okay, there you go. There's a better version of it. Yeah. There's daylight between your chest and your hands now. Yeah. Look at it. It's just like, literally nothing. And the now. thing is, though, yes, I know you're creating speed, but it's almost like you're right. You're arms are like locking into position there trying to get yeah. so much tension and power in the shot and again when you do that tight there that that looks as though someone's scared of going right for me okay this one here now just a nice release through great finish position balance no spinning on that right foot as you had before where you sort of rotate back look at that right foot spin there that's not really up on its toe that's on the toe that is on the ball of your feet yeah because what you've done is when you swing onto your left side you do this you go that so your foot ends up this way. When you yeah. were doing this, that foot rolls up. So if you look at your right foot, if your right foot is more on the toe as opposed to creasing the shoe, that's a better movement majority of the time. I'm not saying for every single shot, if you get it on your toe, it'll be a good shot, but maybe <laughs> more often than maybe not, it'll be a little bit less spinny, okay? Maybe less speed is better at the minute. Well, at the moment, definitely, yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting you swing the club slower long term. What we're trying to do now, and I think if we look at it, quite hard to sort of do it to be fair. If we, if we look at how long this swing takes when you're in your practice, so we say the club starts at about 3.88, the club is moving, okay? So we'll say 3.9 to round it up to our easy mass, okay? And the swing finishes at about, well, we'll say 5.5. So about 1.6 seconds, okay, is the sort of full time your swing takes. Now, if you put the ball there now, there's a club going back, so as you go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so if we measured that there, we'll say 18.3 again for ease of math. Okay, so we we was at 1.6 of ours, I'm on it. So 19.6. Okay. Yeah. It's not that much slower, is it? No. Really? Not really. <laughs> but it's the effort I'm it's putting the, in. Exactly. And that's the thing. When people swing a golf club, they go, oh, more when I swing it slower, it goes further. No, 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 no. You swing it easier. You swing it more efficiently. You swing it better. Your club is still taking the same time to get from A to B. And so by virtue of that, you're swinging at the same speed. Okay? But it feels a lot feels slower fast. to you. Yeah. Because when you swing it across your body, as we said, you're using more effort and energy to try and consume the same amount of hit to the golf ball, whereas this one, it seems effortless, so it doesn't feel so fast. This one's amazing. Yeah. So if we can get, if we, again, for you, if I, I, I'll keep repeating, this is the one you want to keep saying, okay? That one there. Keep looking at that. That, that visual there, almost go to bed, I just seeing that swing in your head. 
what does that look like? Okay, that club swinging back there. That's just if we if we plotted spots. The arc, the arc exactly, and that's the thing. If, if, if we plotted spots there, so if we measured that there, and we just then measured random spots of your hands around your body. Same spot. Ooh, same spot. Same spot. Same spot, and then up to there. That is going to be pretty much a circle. If we do it on this one, where your club was, so hands are there. Nice and wide going back. Yeah, lovely going back. We love that. We'll keep that there. Yeah, the back is great, yeah? So coming back down, still keep it good there. Still good there. Yep. <laughs> And then, where's he gone? Oh, he's around there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Not even close to being in the circle. Not a circle at all, is it? I mean, that, 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 I mean, if you started around there, you'd have to be up here somewhere. That's so going to be that a circle. That just says that what's missing is that follow-through. And that's, again, the impact. The follow-through is a symptom of your impact position, yeah. okay? Face open, come from tension, trying to swing it left, that kind of thing, okay? And this will bring your ball flight down, reduce your energy, hit the ball further, or as far not going to lose distance, hit the ball as far, save energy for the round of golf, hit the ball straighter and more efficiently. As we said, the easiest way to get from point A to point B is a straight line. If your club can, club face can swing nearer to zero rather than 14 out to win and 6 out to the right, it's, there's just so many variables that are going on in there. Okay, so the less variables so in the if swing... If I was to do what you were just saying, mm -hmm. like, see when I get my rescue and I go yeah, yeah. or something, yeah, yeah. Or, well... Is the likelihood is that my um, elevation is going to come down a bit? It depends. It could potentially come down a little bit. Not in a bad way, though. Um, mm. The thing is, for me, when you're striking it better and more efficiently, you'll still be able to, in some ways, have this method, shall we say, that sends... I, I, my swing is very much hooky-biased. So my hands get quite active and I close the club face up a bit too much sometimes. So I know, if I want to hook a golf ball, I did it in the uh, playing lessons ages ago, on the 6th of the Mac. Yeah. Training in the fairway. I've a good drive down the fairway and the boys were like, one of the lads that had shot down there is like 20 yards from the tree. I said, oh, what? I said, what do you know? He said, oh, I don't know where to go. I said, well, what about shaping on the tree? He said, I can't do that. I'm too close to it. I said, well, okay, what, what would you try and do? Which way would you go around? He said, well, I'd probably go left to right because I'm a slicer. Fine. If you try to slice it on the tree, the tree just drop down. I said, okay. I said, because of my swing, I would always go around anything. If I, if I got 50-50, as soon as there's no real danger left to sort of fly, but I would always go left to right. So when I snap up this thing like a bubble star, 90 yards left to right. Left yeah, you exactly. Yeah, different right different So it'd be right to left for you, okay? Yeah. So yeah. hooked it around there, and it was like that for me. So I'll always have that bad shot, in a sense, in my arsehole to know if I need to play that shot, I can. So if every now and then you have a do-or-die situation, you're one down the last, you're in the right and trees on the 18th or whatever, and you got to go over the trees, over the everything, you could probably pull that one out. It's still going to be there dormant, available to come along, okay? You can get up in the air and cut across it and send it up in the air. But it's a, not a shot to have as your normal stop shot. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I can still cross a bridge drunk, sideways, with my feet going one way and get across it and do it once. Yeah. But it's not something I want to try and do all the time. So the shot I, will always still be yeah, there. I absolutely have to work on this because mm. if you look at it from a analysis point of view, mm. is that I have now reached the plateau yeah, of definitely. my development based on my current swing. Exactly. This swing can only get you so far. Yeah. It, and, I, and I think, to be honest with you, mate, from lesson one back when, whenever that was, that's improved massively anyway. Yeah. And I think potentially, and I think firmly when I believe this, that way, the effort you've put in to get from, if we say your first swing was kind of just here on the side, so there was your kind of first swing there, yeah. okay? That's now where you got to. That move there is where we're going to get to. Improvement from what 20-ish, 22, 23 handicap. Yeah, 22 when we started. Down right? to 14, 15 now is it? Yeah. Virgin on 16. Okay, so 22 to 16, 16 to, who knows? Yeah. 10, 11, 12, maybe, maybe single figures. Who knows? We'll see how we'll that movement there. Put it that way. Striking it's one thing being like able that. to. It's one thing being able to hit. 11 or 9 yeah. Oh, yeah. and it's not a thing being a nine maybe handicapper. to stay staying at handicap yeah. yeah exactly I mean I, I knew when, uh, the guys up here play a 4 of handicap they can, they can shoot level par but they're scratch golfers yeah. there's a difference between a scratch golfer and shooting level par totally. that's the thing same as somebody single figure handicapper and breaking 80 okay you can do it but can you do it on a consistent basis okay does that make sense though yeah, yeah excellent good no, stuff